There are four main types of plugins that we need to be successful in SEO with our WordPress site. Number one, we're gonna need an SEO plugin. There's quite a few and I'm gonna tell you guys my favorite. Number two, we're gonna need a structured data plugin. This is really important since a lot of these other tools don't include it. Number three, we're gonna talk about a speed plugin that has completely changed how I see other speed plugins. And number four, we need a security plugin. And if you guys stay till the end of the video, I'm also gonna talk about a few settings inside of WordPress that are essential for our success on Google. And before we get into the plugins, I just wanna say that I'm gonna be extending my Cyber Monday discount for my course. All the details are gonna be in the description, so definitely check that out. So let's start off with that SEO plugin, that first plugin that we need to consider when we have a WordPress website. So there's a lot of these plugins and all of them basically do the same thing. So I'm currently using the free version of Rank Math. I would also recommend Yoast and All-in-One SEO. I'd also say that for 95% of use cases, you guys won't really need the pro versions of these tools. The free versions of these plugins are already quite powerful. So what can we do with these plugins? Well, as soon as you install any of these plugins, you're basically going to be taken to a page like this, right? Which is basically a setup wizard that you're gonna run through to make sure that everything is in the right place. And I highly recommend you guys do this correctly whenever you can do the advanced setup. So we can keep going here and I'll show you guys how that works. You can set up your search console, which is super important. I'm going to tell you guys in a bit why your analytics, AdSense, and more. We're then going to be looking at our sitemaps. We're going to be talking about our sitemaps in just a little bit, but we need to make sure that we do the setup so that we have all of these things at our disposal. And then we're going to quickly take a look at optimization. Most of these things we can just leave as they are, and then we're basically ready to go. So once we've done the setup wizard, we can then go to the dashboard of our plugins. And as you're going to see, guys, there's going to be a lot of different micro tools inside of these plugins. It can also be quite quite overwhelming, but let's just cover the two most high impact things that we're going to use for our SEO plugin. Again, this applies to any SEO plugin that you're using. And that first thing is going to be how it helps us with our content. So we're going to take a look at this sample content of mine targeting that keyword vegan brownie recipe. So you guys are going to see there's not too much content on this page. I just want to show you guys how this plugin works. And so if you guys notice up here, there's going to be a score out of 100. This is a score that Rank Math, Yoast, and All-in-One SEO will give you. So this score basically talks about the progress in terms of SEO for this specific page. So if we click on it, we're going to see a drop down of a variety of things. Now, the most important thing as soon as we see this page is we need to input that focus keyword. This is super important because this is basically going to frame the rest of results that we see with this specific plugin. So I've added in that main keyword, which is vegan brownie recipe. And now we have access to a bunch of things that's going to help us with the on page and all the different details of this page. So starting off, we have this snippet right here. So what we're seeing now is we're seeing a preview of what this page would actually look like if it was indexed on Google, which is phenomenal, right? We know exactly what it's going to look like. So we can input our title here. We get a recommendation in terms of the length of the title. We also have access to the permalink. That's just the actual URL, what that URL is going to include. And then we also have the description. As you guys can see, I've added in that main keyword absolutely everywhere in my title, in my permalink and in my description, right? So super useful. We also have that social preview snippet it, we can see exactly how this post is going to look if I shared it on Facebook or on Twitter, right? So that's phenomenal. If we keep scrolling down, this is where we get to the meat of the plugin, right? So we're going to get a massive checklist of all the things that we should be doing if we wanted to target this specific keyword, right? So we're going to see things like including our focus keyword in the SEO title, including in the meta description and the URL, which we have already done. If we keep scrolling down, it's also giving us a recommendation in terms of the length of the content. And then we have more things down here, things relating to subheadings, which is obviously very very important inside of on page uh, an image with an alt text. So what rank math is doing here is they're basically giving us direct guidance in terms of all the things that we should be doing correctly if we wanted to target this specific keyword for this post, right? So I highly recommend going through this checklist and trying to get as many checks as possible and obviously filling it out with high quality content. So this is one of the main use cases of an SEO plugin like this. It's going to give us a lot of very detailed guidance for any keyword, any post post that we'd like to launch, right? The second thing that I like to use these SEO plugins for is for our sitemap. Now, a sitemap, if you guys aren't familiar with that term, is basically just a list of all the different pages, all the URLs that we have in our website. And this is a page that Google will access, they will crawl it. And that's one of the main ways that Google will find your new content and put that in the Google index, right? So if we go down to the sitemap settings here, we're going to see that automatically after doing that setup wizard, Rank Math 
has created a sitemap for us. Now, this is gonna be exactly the same for Yoast and for All in One. They're both gonna create these sitemap pages for you. Now, if we wanna quickly access this page just to see what that looks like, we're gonna see that we have an index of sitemaps. And if we click into that, there's gonna be all the different pages that I have, not too many as you guys can see. Now, what do we do with our sitemap URL? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Search Console. And that's why it's so important that we previously connected it with that setup wizard. We need to make sure that we go through all of that. Once we're in Google Search Console and we have access, we can see a bunch of things. Not only can we see performance and indexing and the experience, but we also have access to this page right here, which is the sitemap page. So this is where we'd input that URL. I would submit it. I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it again. And then we're gonna get a message like this, right? We're either gonna see success or failed. And the reason why we're gonna see that Google has discovered nine URLs on my page and they're indexing those nine URLs. So things are going very well. So this is super important. We want Google to be aware of all the new pages that we're publishing. That's really gonna help us speed up our growth online. Going back now to the dashboard of Rank Math here, we're gonna see that there's a lot of little micro tools that we can take advantage of, which I highly recommend that you guys check out. But there's a really big limitation with a lot of these SEO plugins and that's structured data. So if you guys aren't aware of what structured data is, first of all, I have a video which I cover all of that in depth, which you guys can check out right here. But otherwise guys, structured data basically just allows us to be eligible for rich snippets, which basically just enhance our results on Google. I'll give you guys a quick example here. So if I looked up parking in New York City, we're gonna see that this is an example of structured data that's coming up in a rich result. And this FAQ right here is something that I add to almost any content page that I'm publishing. And I'd also like to do that on my WordPress. We're quite limited with a lot of these SEO plugins. For most of these SEO plugins, for us to add structured data correctly, we'd have to get the pro version and start paying for these tools, which I'm not really interested in right now. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna go back into the plugin marketplace and we're gonna find a good structured data plugin. So if we go to the marketplace here and I type in schema, we're gonna find this guy right here. As you guys can see, it's already active. Highly recommend you guys download this guy. And then you're gonna see something like this. So if I go back into my post and I open it up, we're gonna see I can basically add a bunch of different blocks here. So if I browse all the different blocks I can add and I scroll down. So with that plugin, we now have the option of using all these different blocks on our WordPress completely for free without touching any code, which is phenomenal. So we can use an FAQ, a how-to, which I'm already doing, a job, a Q and A, a recipe, a lot of different possibilities here. Highly recommend you guys check out that plugin. Now guys, I wanna to talk to you guys about my favorite WordPress plugin. So this one has to do with the speed of my WordPress website. So check this out. What I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna deactivate this plugin, which is a WP Rocket plugin. I'm gonna analyze the speed of my website on PageSpeed Insights and on GT Metrics. We're gonna see how bad that PageSpeed score is before I turn on that plugin. And after all it is, is literally one click of a button. I'm also gonna show you guys the settings that I have for the plugin, which almost all the settings are the same ones that come right out of the box with the plugin. So GT Metrics is giving us a C, performance 76, 87 for structure. Web vitals aren't looking very good. This is a pretty average speed, right? And if we go into page speed insights, they're obviously not as nice. We're gonna see a 36 for mobile and on desktop a 79. We usually perform a lot better for desktop. Now I'm gonna go back into WordPress. All I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this plugin. This is why I love this plugin so much, guys. I'm gonna activate it. It's now active. I'm gonna rerun these tests, retests. And so guys, check out the difference here. Just from turning on that plugin, we now have an A, 100% performance, 99 for structure, and Web Vitals is looking a lot better. If we head over to PageSpeed Insights, a 97 for mobile, guys, this is very, very difficult to do. And now guys, let's walk through some of these settings. Most of these settings, again, are the ones that come right out of the box with the plugin. So we can check out the cache. I do have cache enabled for mobile devices and they're separate. That's about it. I haven't changed anything else here. File optimization. I've I minified my CSS files and I've optimized their delivery. Uh, I minified JavaScript files. I've also deferred their loading. Uh, these are my settings here. I honestly don't think I've changed any settings after that. So I've enabled lazy loading, preloading as well. I don't have any advanced rule database. All of this is empty. I also do not have, even though it's checked, uh, I'm not paying for this Rocket CDN. So all I've done is get rid of any other speed caching plugin that I had. I paid for this guy. I installed this one and it works incredibly well. This is now the plugin that I'm using for my personal websites and for my clients that are on WordPress. Highly recommend you guys check out this plugin. It is a paid plugin and I am not affiliated with these guys at all. It's just a phenomenal plugin and I highly recommend you guys check that out. So heartbeat as well, add-ons, and I don't really have anything else here. So definitely check out 
that plugin. The last plugin that I want to talk about before we talk about those essential settings is we need a security plugin. So as someone who does a lot of SEO testing and website building on WordPress, I've had so many of my websites hacked and it's honestly a mess to get them back. So I highly recommend getting a free security plugin. The one I use is Security, this one right here, Security WP plugin. It is completely free and it's working phenomenally on all the sites that I've installed this plugin on. Now let's talk about some extra settings that are essential for your website to succeed. Now we're just going to go through this quickly here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into settings here. We're going to go into reading. And this is really important, guys. We need to make sure that this right here is unchecked, right? If we check this, we're basically going to discourage search engines from indexing this site. Now, this is the exact opposite of what we want. We want Google to be crawling the site and to be indexing every single page that we'd like to be indexed. So just please make sure that this is unchecked. And if it is checked, please uncheck it. Next, guys, we need to talk about our URL. We need to go into our permalinks. Now, if you have a brand new WordPress website, you might have URLs that look like this. So this is a bit of a mess and we can clean this up by basically changing the type of structure that we have for our URLs, right? I highly recommend having a post name permalink structure or instead having a category and then a post name. That also works quite well. Please make sure to check that out so you don't have messy URLs with a bunch of numbers and random letters. Now, if you're working with URLs that have already been published or already getting traffic, we don't want to worry about those URLs. We don't want to change things that are already working. We just want to make sure that moving forward, we have clean URLs. And just really quickly, guys, as a last thing, if we go into our settings and we click on general, we just need to make sure that both of these URLs are exactly the same. That's going to help WordPress identify that main URL. We don't want any problems with that either. If you guys like this video, I highly recommend you guys check out this one. And again, that Cyber Monday discount is going to be extended. All the details are going to be in the description. Go check out my course. Thanks for sticking till the end, guys. I'll see you in the next one.